Hello, this is Bill Hayhurst from TelQuest Tech Support. In this lesson, we'll be going over the IP Office Essential and Standard Edition Registration Type SIP Trunk Programming. There are different types of SIP trunks. In this particular lesson, we'll be addressing the registration type. This lesson is based on the assumption that you already have experience programming the IP Office Essential system. If you don't have experience, we encourage you to use our follow along training DVD for the IP Office Essential Edition first. Otherwise, you may not receive the full benefit of this lesson. All right, as you can see, I've already opened up the manager. And the first thing we're going to do is go up here to where it says line. And we're going to right click on that. That will give us a dialog box here. We're going to select new. And we're going to go over here and choose SIP line and click on that. Okay, once that comes up, we can go right ahead up here and we're going to put in the ITSP domain name. That could either be the name or the IP address of the SIP service provider. They will give you that information. Once again, we're going to use call center. All right, if you noticed, the work that we did there was under the SIP line tab. Now we're going to move to the end to where it says SIP credentials and we're going to click on that. Next thing we're going to do is go over to the right where it says add and click on that. Down at the bottom we're going to put in three pieces of information. The username, authentication name, contact, and of course I forgot the password. Keep in mind not every SIP service provider calls these items by the same name. Something as simple as authentication name could be authorization name, authentication account. You'll have to take into consideration the different ways this can be phrased so you understand it. In the case of call centric, it's very easy. It's the telephone number. All right, I zipped ahead a little bit there to save some time. If you notice, in the case of call centric, it's the same information for all three fields. Once again, as I may say many times, keep in mind that your SIP service provider may do things differently. And of course, we put in finally we put in the password, and we also have to make sure that the registration required is checked. If you also notice where this says expiry, that's the amount of time before the registration expires. That is basically a suggestion. You don't have absolute control over that. In most cases, the SIP service provider will modify that. So with that in mind, you can leave it at 60. Then we can click OK and move on to the next step. Okay, our next step, we can click on the T38 fax tab. And that's real simple because there's nothing that we do in there. Uh, fax over the internet or SIP or VOIP is not reliable at this time. Hardly anyone uses it. The next tab we go to is the VOIP, VOIP, and click on that. In here, you can leave things as they are by default unless your service provider has a special application where it needs to be changed. The compression mode is typically it. These are the four different codec that you can use. This is what actually encodes your voice into packets. And it's set in this order. These are the most popular that are out there. In most cases, you can simply leave this part alone. Okay, after the VoIP tab, we have the SIP URI tab right up here. We're going to click on that. Then we're going to go to the right where it says Add. Click on that. And down at the bottom, that's where we do our work. In the case of callcentric.com, we can use a local URI, contact, display name. We can use the credentials of the user name. The only thing you really need to change here are these four items down at the bottom. Registration. We want to register against this telephone number. The incoming group is actually 17. Let me demonstrate that for you. As you can see up here, where we have our line number for our SIP line, it's number 17. That's where it comes from. So here, our incoming group, we're going to change that to 17. Our outgoing group, we're going to change that to 17. And the maximum calls per channel, we're going to reduce that down to one for simplicity. Then we go ahead and click the OK button over here on the right, and we're done with this portion. Okay, the next area is actually the next tab where it says transport right up here. We're going to click on that 
and in this area where it says ITSP proxy address, you can either put in the IP address or the URL for this proxy name. Your SIP service provider will tell you if it's necessary. And of course, in the case of call centric, we put in call centric. Over here, everything else will remain the same by default unless you have some very special application. All right, with those basic settings using callcentric.com, your SIP trunk should be in service. Unfortunately, unlike the IP Office Partner version, there's no way we can tell on the KSU directly if the SIP trunk is registered or not. Additionally, since SIP trunks do not have an appearance number, they cannot appear as a button on the telephone as they do on the IP Office Partner. So, how do we make an outgoing call using our SIP trunk? Well, that part's easy. Remember that the IP Office Essential slash standard version, or standard edition, I should say, is a PBX. And in the PBX realm, we're going to use an access code to pick our SIP trunk. In this example, we'll be using eight. So let's set that up now. Okay, here's how we're going to create our access code, also known as a short code in the IP Office Edition. We go over here in the left-hand column where it says short code, and we right click on it. Then we're going to choose the word new and over here where it says short code we're going to change that to make it dial 8 followed by a capital N followed by a semicolon. The telephone number is going to be a capital N and the line group if you recall earlier it's going to be 17 for our SIP trunk. The locale and the force account code are not used. Once you input that information, you click the OK button down the bottom, and we now have, we consult our column on the left, we can see that we have 8N as a short code, and it's going to pick line group 17, which is our SIP trunk. All right, now I'm going to show you an alternate method of making SIP calls. We're still going to use the dial 8 access code. The difference is that the present code that we set up, 8 capital N semicolon, means that after you dial your digits, whether it's one digit or 11 digits, the PBX is going to wait four seconds before it begins sending the call out over the SIP trunk. In many cases, that's not something that the customer likes. So we can modify our code a little bit differently to make calls go out much quicker. Okay, and here's how we're going to do that. We're going to go back into the left-hand column again, and we're going to right-click on short code. Then we're going to choose the word new once again. This time where it says code, we're going to put the 8 in there, but we're going to follow it with 11 capital X's. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. What that represents is any 11 digits. At the end of that, the KSU will begin dialing immediately. Earlier, we used the N and the semicolon method, which meant any length of digits followed by a four second delay. Now we're specifically telling the KSU, after I've dialed my 11th digit, put the call through immediately. Again, the telephone number will be N, which represents the 11 digits. The line group will be 17, since we're going out on our SIP trunk. I should have pointed out the feature will remain the word dial. After you've done this, click OK down at the bottom right hand corner. We can go back to our column in the left side and we can check it and we can see at the very bottom there we have our 8 followed by 11x short code. And if we widen up this column, we can also see that it will dial and it will dial out on SIP trunk number 17. This is much more acceptable by customers. Of course, you must have 11-digit dialing on your SIP trunk. You cannot dial seven-digit local numbers. All right, now that we've gone over that, I'm going to show you how to route the incoming SIP trunk call to a hunt group or a station or an auto attendant. Actually, incoming SIP calls are no different than incoming analog calls as well. So to do that, we go in the left column once again, where it says incoming call route, and we're going to right click on that. 
we're going to choose the word new. It opens up over here, a new incoming call route. The line group ID, we can choose 17 from the drop down. That's our SIP trunk, as you recall. Then we go to destinations. Over here, the destination. In this case here, we're going to send that call to the operator. We click OK, and that's it. Any calls coming in on line group ID 17 will go to the operator. Of course, if we wanted to send it to a hunt group instead, a group of extensions, we could have chosen a the 200 main, which is the hunt group. Or we could have typed in over here, AA colon AA1, if we wanted to send the incoming calls to the auto attendant. Remember, this column here, destination, is the destination for the calls coming in. Okay, that concludes this section on SIP trunk programming. Keep in mind, this is a basic lesson. There are a variety of different types of SIP trunks out there, and there are a variety of ways that different providers can send you those services. Be prepared for different arrangements from different providers. I once thought that all there was to telephone work was climbing a pole and hooking up wires and making the phone work. As time went by, I learned a whole lot more. And I think you'll discover the same thing with SIP trunks. I encourage you, get call centric IP Freedom account. Use it. Experience it. Play with it. Get someone else to get one. Call each other. And you'll have a working understanding of the basics of SIP trunk registration. We also have a section on SIP trunk testing. Make sure you look at that and become familiar with it. It'll help you quite a bit as you discover and learn more about SIP trunks. This is Bill Hayhurst for TelQuest Tech Support. Once again, thanks for watching this video.